So, I decided to conti continue the trend regarding x-ray production. But this time, I have upgraded from this rectifier tube, the Kenotron, to a more proper x-ray tube, as you may see right here. This one is able to produce a lot more radiation, and it's concentrated in the main beam, rather than this tube, because this one uses a tilted target, the anode is tilted, rather than this one, where the anode is surrounding everywhere, surrounding the cathode. It's also utilizing tungsten carbide as a target, rather than aluminium, so there's a much better and even output. But, in general, this tube is made by Svetlana Rentgen. It's a 0.8 BPM 14-160 tube. It's from 1991, at least this one is. It utilizes a heated cathode and uh, much higher voltage than the rectifier tube. The cathode is made by of uh, tung torated tungsten. The connections are on top here. There's two terminals. One will be for the low low voltage input to heat it up. It can be any of these you pretty much choose. It's supposed to be running at 5.6 volts, 4.2 amps. And um, the other terminal, which you decided not to use as the positive, will be the negative, of course. Both for the filament and the high voltage. So, the anode connection is on the other side. It's this copper hole in the tube, which is surrounding by this um, heat sink made of aluminium and it's pretty much it about the tube except also it of course as you might see utilizes a beryllium window which is where the main beam is outputted and there's a little bit of a green dot here that show where the middle of the beam is but that's it I have another of these tube tubes which is already installed in a more proper environment or proper environment as this one also would like to be in oil as it can heat up quite a lot in the anode part and also a bit in the cathode terminals so it's good to have it under heating uh, under cooling so it doesn't break as it's not too fun to break a nice old x-ray tube but before that I'm also going to demonstrate what screens I'm going to use to record x-ray images. We have the first one here. It's a x-ray cassette, a blue one with a speed 800 as you might see. This one will of course fluoresce blue when exposed to high amounts of x-rays. The screen we're out after is inside of this cassette. It's stuck on the other one. This is the screens we're out after. It's intensifier screens, and this is the ones which will actually fluoresce and we will get an extra image on top, on them, as a shadow. You can just rip these out of the cassettes, like I have done here. You can see that this one is still stuck, but this one is loose. And uh, this blue one utilizes tung calcium tungstate which is much worse when it comes to imaging for an amateur rather than a green screen which I will demonstrate right now so I got this bigger one here, much bigger it's also an x-ray cassette but it's a green one instead which utilizes rare earth metals instead of tungst calcium tungstate and here's the screens, similar, pretty much looks the same. But this one will actually glow, or well, fluoresce green rather than blue. And it's much better when taking images or recording, as it's both brighter in 
real life and brighter on the camera. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to now jump to the actual setup. So, this is the box that I have chosen to make into the X-ray machine. It's an absolute mess inside, as you may see. But it works for my use. This little white container here is the X-ray tube itself. You may see it here through the transparent plastic top. And it's submerged in two liters of transformer oil both for cooling and isolation from the other electronics. The rest of the cables, including the cables inside of this box, is just for the filament heating. I'm using a bunch of phone chargers, which is going through a bunch of resistors, and it's producing around 3 volts to the filament, rather than the recommended 5.6 volts. As I'm not really able to produce any more than that, and I rather run it on a bit of a lower power to increase the life of the tube. The power supply I'm going to use is this one. It's a Chinese one made. It's up to 60 kilovolts, 3.3 milliamps, and it works for my use. The tube is made to run at a, high, at a higher wattage, but I'm not really able to produce that at the moment, so I'm going to use this one, as it's much easier as I'm not really educated at running electronics. That's it. So now I'm going to demonstrate the fluorescence. When a screen is put in front of the exit window, which is on this side, so I jump to that. So, as you can see, here's the beam output. I'll put some duct tape on, on top, as the tube will go like, well, a lamp, and the filament is heated, and that would uh, interfere with any light from the intensifier screen. So I just put it in front, and I have to put it quite close, as the camera is still very bad when it comes to being able to pick up the light. So I'll have to put something behind it to keep it standing. Like that. The intensifier screen is now in place. So I'll turn back off, turn the power supply on, kill the lights and uh, turn the filament voltage on. And hopefully you'll, you will be able to see quite a lot of glow on the screen itself. So I start by turning on the power supply. Fill the, fill the lights and turn on the filament. You can see a bright green, green glow. And if I bring a charger down, you should be able to see an X-ray image of the charger in real time. Pretty cool. Not easy, with my current setup, but it works. So that's pretty much it for this screen. I won't really be extracting different items, as it's quite messy. Not really possible when doing a video like this. But I hope the charger demonstration, this is the charger I extracted, was good enough. But it's not over yet. I'll also put a blue screen, the, tung the calcium tungstate screen, to demonstrate the differences when it comes to how much light they will emit or fluoresce. So I'll place that screen in place. So, the screen is in place. You might not be able to see much glow as it's quite insensitive as said, but hopefully there is some fluorescence being displayed on the camera. In real life it's much brighter, both the green one and the blue one. But as said, the camera is not as good as the human eye. But I do everything again. I turn on the high voltage, kill the lights, and uh, turn on the filament. So here comes the power supply. 
in the mind. And turn on the beam. Hopefully you can see some, but there's not much as you may also be able to see. I'm putting a charger in front, but I don't think the camera can pick up much. And there's clearly way less fluorescence from the blue screen. But now, to the more fun part, I'd say. We'll uh, show some uh, simple measurements with different detectors. So I'll move the camera a bit. So, let's see if I am able to angle the camera correctly. I have the TP2 placed a bit sideways, so it's able to be correctly in the beam. It's set on 200 R per hour mode, which, well, the max is 200 R per hour. Hopefully, you're able to see the scale move. So I back off again, turn the supply on, and hopefully it maxes. But we'll see. This time I won't kill the lights. So I turn on the power supply and turn on the filament. And turn it off. And I hope there was a visible amount shown on the scale itself. Place it quite close to the window for maximum exposure. Now I instead place the phone camera in the beam window and you should hopefully see a pretty big amount of flashes. I'll have to put it sideways so hopefully it doesn't kill the quality. Put it in the window like this and I turn the beam on once more. So turn on the power supply. Now turning on the filament. And hopefully, you could see some pretty nice flashes. Now, finally, I'll show how much backscatter is present. So I'll bring out my radio scan and be back. So, got the radio scan here. I put a screen in front so I can see if the beam is functioning like it's supposed to. I uh, Turn on the power supply. Now I'll turn on the filament voltage. You may see some glow. And if I have my radio scan here, we're getting a pretty big dose rate. Two millisieverts. Three, five, almost six. Not as much from the top. And a bit more if it's pointed at the direction of the beam. Here is Maxus. And if I put it in the beam, it will probably zero. But that's pretty much it for my messy but still operational new X ray setup. It's not much, but it's something at least. So I hope it was interesting to some extent.